I'm so pleased to have at the table Judge Clarence Jones, a Superior Court trial judge in the state of Connecticut for 20 years, now retired and now writing a book. But let's talk about your time on the bench. You dealt a lot with children, foster care, abuse, neglect. How does one handle the cases that you had to handle for 20 years? A lot of prayer, <laughs> uh, a lot of 23rd Psalming, yeah. and uh, understanding the importance of the work, the importance of trying to intervene in the lives of troubled youth and their family uh, to help them in some way. How bad is the situation in the state of Connecticut? Now you say in foster care, a quarter of a million kids go into the system every year. That's across the country? Yes. Tell me about Connecticut. Um, in, in Connecticut, uh, we have 4,000 kids in foster care. 40% of those are in traditional foster care homes. 30% in relative foster care homes. What does this do to a child? What did you see on the bench over so many years? What does this do to kids? Well, it, it's very traumatizing. Uh, th I think all of the uh, experts who've studied in this area say that uh, domestic violence, if, if they've experienced that, or other traumatic events uh, upset these kids. Do you, as a former judge, have ways that we can fix this? How do we fix this? How do we start to have kids that are not in foster care because they're neglected or abused? Mm -hmm. Proper parenting techniques, teaching proper parenting techniques is one way. Um, if, you, if you have good parents, uh, you turn out parents who are not troubled in, in some way. Uh, the, the kids have a better chance. And there are a lot of children who came to my court, for example, who did not have good parenting uh, opportunities, and you can see that from their behavior. There's also some uh, interventions that can go into effect through um, uh, psychological counseling for the, for the kids, therapeutic counseling for the families. Are we spending enough money in this area, do you think? Well, Connecticut spends a lot of money. I think if the budget is about $300,000 a year. Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 300. Um, well, it's a lot. We're, yes. we're, we're paying attention to it. Yes. But we have this across the country. You went to Tuskegee University. You went to Howard Law School. Mm -hmm. um, getting to the book now called Triumph. Yes. And, and you, you, you talk about some of the things that you saw on, on the bench. Did you always want to be a writer? Yes. Tell me about that. Sure. I was at Tuskegee Institute. That's in Tuskegee, Alabama. And um, at, at age 18 as a freshman, and the university had some people to come through to talk to the various students at the time. And one of the persons who came through was an author. So he talked about his book, and I said, well, one day I'd like to write a book. What kind of an author was he? I don't remember. <laughs> but it just, it stuck in your head. Yes. So, so has this idea, and, and tell me what triumph means. Okay. Triumph means, um, the story is based upon a young lady, who, young girl rather, who goes to the foster care system, and the foster care system benefits her, and so she is triumphant over her terrible past. Her mother tried to kill her, for example. Some other people tried to kill her, but she made it to a, a uh, New England school. Loosely based, perhaps, <laughs> yeah. on Connecticut. Yes, and, and she did well there, and she went into Washington, D.C., and she did well there, and she ended up being a very uh, pers good person who helped out foster kids. Was it hard to write, or, or did it, the words just come? Uh, the, the words pretty much came. And how did you write? Did you write locked up in a room somewhere? Did you go on a beach? I mean, how did you write this book? Uh, a lot on weekends. Um, and so I would, the family excused you? Yes, thanks, <laughs> thanks to my wife. The, the book is dedicated to her. Uh, and I just sat down and, and write, and I, and, I, and I wrote. And so I, I did an outline, followed the outline, and that's how I did it. Now, rumor has it you're writing a second book to I'm this. I'm writing a sequel to this. Can you tell us what happens in the sequel well, the, loosely? Well, the, the, the question, what happens to the protagonist and what happens to the parents who failed her, but they're now seeking to find her and those sorts of things. So you, could you write a trilogy to this and there might be a Probably. third book? Oh, yes. Once you, once you find it. Now, it's self-published. Mm -hmm. When you told, told some of your fellow um, uh, legal folks about this, they have they all written books too or are you the only one in your crowd that, that has I done think this? 
I think there are two other books. I know, I know definitely there is one other book that mm -hmm. was written by a colleague of mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you ever th think about writing, um, not the book that you wrote, but f something factual? Did you ever think about getting that out there? What's really going on in the system across the country? I think this is sort of a uh, way of raising the lid on some of that because the items that are showcased in the book itself reflect some of that hardest, across the country. Hardest case you ever tried? Do you remember? I mean, there were so many. But what stuck with you that you just wished you could have fixed? Well, um... There was a, a case in, involving um, the boiling of a little baby boy in a hot tub, situation like that with parts of his flesh coming off. It was, it was very disturbing. How do you sit, I mean, you, we opened up with that, yeah, mm. prayer, mm. but case after case that came into your court mm. was tragic. Right, but, but this is also an opportunity to intervene and to help the family and, and the child who's being abused. Mm -hmm. uh, ordering psychological counseling, uh, putting the child in a, in a helpful foster home, and there are some good foster homes. We had, had one case in which the uh, young man came to me, or came to the court, uh, saying that he had terrible problems with concentration, ADD child, uh, poor academic, qualifications um, and, and just a child that was out of control. We placed that child in a therapeutic foster home. Within six months, the child was number one in his class, had no problems with attention, deficit. So it, there's some joy Absolutely. There. There's some joy. Mm -hmm. In this country, we do not um, adopt older kids. That's a problem because folks who do adopt want babies. This generations of, of kids that are in their teens, what do we do with, with that group of kids? Probably programs, uh, group homes, um, programs that will uh, shore them up, psychological counseling for those kids, mm -hmm. um, and group homes, I think. When you left the bench, was it time? Did you do all you thought you were going to do? Um, and were you ready to go? Yes, I was ready to go. I've been there for 21 years. I had uh, sat in juvenile court for eight of those years. I also sat on criminal cases and civil cases and family law cases, divorce cases, and I had a rich experience there. So you're, you have some downtime now, so now you're writing the book. Yes. Um, how soon does the next one come out? Probably in about six months. Are you hard on yourself when you're writing? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you're not. You just you play a little golf and you, and yes. you do a little writing. But, I, but also, I'm off counsel to a law firm in Guilford called Cronin and Shields. My stepson is Tim Shields, uh -huh. and I have a mediation and arbitration business. Well, so, so you're you're very you're not really retired. Uh, you're you're uh, just you're very busy. Yes, I am. What do you want the reader to get out of this book? Uh, the appreciation of the difficulties that some of these families suffer but also the realization that there's light at the end of the rainbow. Well, on that note, we're going to end this, and that's a beautiful thank you for serving our state on the bench all those years, mm -hmm. and we look forward to the second book. Thank you. Judge Clarence Jones. Thank, thank you. you. Spend all night kissing and if one was right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution and find the keys to the door.